This video is an introduction to Superbase. We'll cover the architecture, what it's all about. Uh, we'll take a look into the pricing plans, uh, how to self-host, how to use it in your local development, and we'll finish the video by creating a simple uh, application in BAN and uh, JavaScript. Uh, Superbase is an uh, open source Firebase alternative. Uh, probably there are people that uh, haven't worked with uh, any of those. Uh, and um, let's uh, take a look what, what, what it offers for a developer. So we have a couple uh, main components uh, that's available. And the biggest one and the most important is database. And difference here that in um, Superbase, we use uh, open source components. And for database, uh, we're using Postgres. In uh, Firebase, uh, on the other hand, uh, the database is a NoSQL solution. OK, so we have our Postgres database, right? Uh, on top of that, uh, we can enable a, a role level security that will allow us to create rules uh, that will describe how we can access data inside our tables. So for each row, we can say that this row uh, could be uh, updated by the owner uh, and also could be updated by the admin, etc. So we can define all these uh, fine-grained uh, rules. Uh, the other component of the system is authentication server. And... Uh, it will do the uh, user management for us. Uh, it also has um, a lot of uh, social logins uh, support, like you can configure your Google authentication uh, client there, Facebook, etc. cetera. Um, and this works together with our uh, uh, role-level uh, role secur uh, security policies in uh, Postgres. Um, there are also edge functions and uh, real time and some AI, which I'm not really interested in right now. Uh, but there is also a storage, so it's something that uh, you don't want put in your database. Uh, but you want to upload some files. A good example will be just like you know the avatars of your users or something like that. So this is what we we get, and. Um, Let's briefly take a look into concrete uh, implementations of these components. So for the authentication, there is a service called GoTrue, which uh, was written by Superbase itself, I believe. Uh, then we have our database that we already discussed, which is Postgres. Um, on top of that, we have a REST API. So uh, by default, for all your tables, uh, the, um, it will be exposed as an API for insert, update, uh, and select. And the tool that we rely on is called Postgres. And I had a bit of a experience working with that a couple of years ago. Uh, quite nice. Um, the interesting fact about that is that it's just written in uh, Haskell, which is not a really common thing to see. But yeah, it works fine. And um, as I said, they are, these three things will be just main uh, main core of the platform. Um, and also we have the studio, uh, which is a just a dashboard where you can um, see what's going on in your project. Um, and yeah, also we have real time and storage API and uh, edge functions. Cool. Uh, let's move into the pricing section. And for beginners, you are probably interested in, in the free plan. And it, it's quite good, I would say. So we have unlimited API requests for, for our database. Uh, then we have uh, 50,000 monthly active users for authentication. Um, this is quite low, like half gigabyte of uh, disk space for the database. Um, but for small applications, if, you, if you're just starting, uh, it should be enough for, for some time. Yeah, so that's fine. We have one gigabyte of file storage uh, for the uh, file uploads and uh, some network um, 
bandwidth. And if you're interested in all features, they are listed here. Pretty cool that we have all our social providers available. And that's about pricing. If you want to go next level, it starts from 25 months. So moving next, uh, how you start with that. And the easiest way to start with Superbase is to use Superbase CLI. Uh, and it will allow us to uh, start all these containers locally. Um, and you can use that, uh, you can spin your containers on your machine and then connect from your application and start developing. So to install that, uh, there is an installation guide here. I'm on macOS, so I'm just using the brew, uh, brew command to install it. And after that, we'll have our Superbase CLI available. This is the version I'm currently having. And uh, when you're in the project, so I already created it to save some time, uh, but this is our code that we'll take a look later, but this is like a top level project. Uh, and you see, I have this Superbase uh, folder here. And this is what we'll have if you just run Superbase init. It will create all these uh, uh, files and folders for you. So after you've done that, uh, you can actually st start your containers by running Superbase uh, start. Uh, for me, it says that containers are already running. Um, and I can run Superbase uh, status. And it will give me the information how I can access uh, Studio, which is like a UI. Uh, and also this one of the main API entry points. Um, this will be required for your client uh, to connect to your project. And also this uh, key, I think. Yeah, so that's for the local development. Um, and two more things that are important in the workflow is that you can use migrations. Uh, and to, to use them, you can do... Um, uh, let me just show you quickly where you can find that. So if you go to local development and then to database migrations, it will say how to. Uh, it will show you how to create a new migration. So let's say we want a new migration, and I want to call it like two because I have one already. So now you see if we we should see a new file here, and I can just grab this create statement and just call it two at the end and after that i can run superbase uh, db reset that will recreate my database locally with the new migrations and of course you can just apply new migrations as you go and that's the uh, approach you'll take if you deploy to production or development but locally the easiest way is just to reset your database um, Let's remove this for now, and let me rerun this command. So it's recreating the database now. Yeah, uh, should be done. Uh, so if I run superbase status once again, and I grab this uh, studio uh, URL, go and see what we have so we now have two tables uh, and this is like a, you can select your data here if you prefer but also it's quite easy to connect from any uh, database tool that you prefer I'm using um, IntelliJ so I just can uh, configure a data source that will go straight to the database um, so we have these uh, migrations, they were applied, as we see, because tables are there. And then we can uh, insert some test data if we want, which is called a seed. Uh, seed.sql file is generated by default when you run uh, your superbase init command. And now if I do reset once again, we should see this data in the employees table.
Yep, uh, let's reload our page and go here and we see our data. So this kind of like, uh, from this point, you can just use your local uh, deployment uh, of Superbase and you can start building your uh, applications. Um, before we move to the, to the code, I just want to show you that um, you can just self-host it with Docker and it's officially supported. So if you don't want to use free plan, if you don't want to use Superbase as a SaaS uh, solution, uh, you can just, if you have like your server or whatever, you can just use Docker and follow these steps. Uh, and with Docker Compose, you'll have your components running and you can use them and uh, work with them uh, in your applications as well. Um, yep. So regarding the code, I created a small uh, barn Elysia JS application. It looks like this, a really small thing. So to install uh, Superbase JS client, that's the dependency. So for barn, it will be barn install uh, Superbase JS. And I also use this fake library to generate some test data. And then we use this create client from Superbase JS and I'm passing Superbase URL and key. So for, if you're using local, uh, local deployment, you, you will need an API URL and this key uh, to start. Unfortunately, I cannot show you how this works in local because on my machine, unfortunately, I have a firewall that I cannot control. So I have some problems with uh, Docker to Docker connection, um, but that should work uh, for you. Um, let me know if you can use it in the client uh, and use it with the local deployment. But for here, I use this URL and key for my uh, SaaS version of that. So if I go here, this is, uh, in Superbase now, I created a project and um, I created a table manually. So you can just use this uh, editor here and uh, you can add uh, tables and edit uh, tables. So let's say we want uh, to uh, add a column. So I can do uh, add column here. Let's say I want about and it will be text. And I want it to be nullable. Yeah, it's nullable by default. So now I just run save. Yeah, now we have this about column here. Uh, let's quickly uh, delete all the data. And in our code, what we're doing is we uh, we're using this client that we created and we use this API uh, to uh, insert values into profiles. So that's the value that we want. And let's say we want about as well. And we want faker um, lorem uh, text, I think. Yeah, that should work. Um, after that, we'll just log the insert result. And after that, we will select everything from, from profiles, and then we convert it into a string and return it as response from the uh, root handler. And the root handler is just mapped to get uh, uh, on the just slash at the root of our app. So let's jump into this folder and we can run uh, bun run dev. And if I go here and reload this page, we see that we have an entry. Uh, we can check that it's created inside here. Yes, you see this. And now if we we'll just refresh it, it will add, <coughs> generate more records into, into that table. So obviously it's just a start of the journey, uh, but it's quite good because in this client, you'll have all the functions you need to work with authentication, uh, creating users, creating sessions, creating tokens. 
and after that you have API to work with your database and you have two options like you can go through the REST API that Postgres provides uh, if that works for you that's fine uh, if there are some limitations you you can always fall back to uh, just uh, talking directly to Postgres uh, with like well-known libraries and from any language that you want um, and yeah like there are no new tools so uh, Postgres is really popular so tons of information how to use it and also you are not locked in because if you want to move out of uh, Superbase or to move into Superbase and you already have a Postgres database it's quite easy because you can just do dump of your data and insert it into uh, Superbase. So um, I'm really uh, impressed so far with uh, the features that are available and I think there'll be a series of videos building something interesting on top of Superbase uh, some application probably with HTMX um, because I'm really enjoying this as well uh, but that will be in the future series uh, for now thanks a lot for watching I hope it was a useful introduction into Superbase don't forget to leave comments uh, and don't forget to like the video and of course subscribe and as usual you can support me on buy me a coffee uh, on YouTube uh, or in the Substack. Uh, have a nice day. Bye-bye.